Hey everyone. So today's video log is going to be about a rather simple question, which was asked on our IRC channel. And the question is, well, let's assume that we did some work in our Python interpreter, which we run in our console, right? How do we store the history of the commands which we entered into the interpreter? Let's assume that we did run the vanilla Python version, we didn't actually run the IPython, which has all the logging possibilities which we would want. But yeah, um, we do have to somehow store the history of the commands to a text file. And it turns out that it's actually a harder question from one side and then easier from the other, depending on how you look at it. Let's start by saying that the Python version on Linux, which you can see in the darker console here, uses, uses the read line interface. Now, the read line interface is basically um, it's a library read line which um, allows you to enter commands and also stores history and also gives you features like search, backwards search, or entering any amount of characters that you would like to do with a, a simple set of shortcuts. Now, it doesn't really have a shortcut to store the history, but it does have an exported function which does this. Well, to bet that it's actually not exported into a shortcut, but since we have the Python interpreter running, we can import the library. So we can do import readline. And now we can directly call the function which does export the history, which is somewhat funny from one side because we are actually calling a function in a library which is being actively used by the interpreter, but on the other hand, it makes a lot of sense. So yes, the function is called write history file, and we just give it a path. So tmp asdf. And let's see if it actually works. tmp asdf and read. Here we go. It has been stored. Now, the readline interface is actually used only on the Linux version of Python. If we switch to the Windows console, it gets a little bit, bit trickier because it doesn't use the readline interface. The readline library is not really present even on the Windows version. So how does this work? Because as you can see, if I press the arrow up or arrow down, um, the history is still present here. So what's up with that? It turns out that the console itself, the conhost.exe, process has the built-in history functionality. And if you press F7, you actually can see the history and you can, you know, repeat the commands and so on. So how do we store that? It turns out that there is an application which is called Dosky. It's a really legacy, really old application, which allows you to do just that. But it's a little trickier than you think. So for um, one thing is that the history is actually stored per process name. So Python has a separate history and the cmd.exe has a separate history. So if we exit Python, the history is actually preserved, so we don't have to worry about that. And if we do dos key and type history, we will see the history for the cmd for the interpreter, however, not for the Python interpreter. There's another um, parameter called exe name, and we can type here Python which should display the Python history, but it doesn't. It turns out that we actually would have to either rename doski to python.exe, and that would work, or we would have to run it from the Python interpreter itself. And just to show you that the history is actually preserved, I'm going to, to do this. So, okay, let's do it. Let's call it from Python. I'm going to use os.system. Normally, you probably would like to use something else like the subprocess module, but that's fine. We can live with uh, this. So, doski history exe name and python.exe. And let's redirect it to another file called asdf. Now, something happened, but that's, uh, that's fine. I'm going to open the file asdf and read it and print out the content. And as you can see, we did actually get the history printed out. So how does Dosky work internally? Well, it's actually quite interesting, actually quite funny, because it turns out that it uses an undocumented WinAPI 
function or functions, I should say, get console command history length and get console command history. The first one, as the name implies, actually fetches the length of the history in bytes, like how many characters should we allocate um, to, to be able to store the, the full history. And the second one actually fetches it into a buffer. And uh, that's about it. One more curious thing here is that it actually the return history is stored in a, um, as a stream of bytes which uh, where each line, each command is actually separated by a null terminator. So it's really similar to the way that, uh, for example, arguments are stored on, on Linux. I'm going to upload this to my GitHub and I'll post a link in the description down below. So yeah, that's about it. And uh, one more thing, thank you for 10,000 subscriptions on YouTube. My English channel finally has reached that boundary and I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, thank you and see you next time.